Maintenant, je vais demander à vous speak English. Que je n'ai que je vais vous Je vais demander à nos amis de venir là, mes côtés, et aux professeurs aussi de venir. Right there. Yeah. OK. Euh, monsieur l'ambassadeur de France, qui est quelque part, où est-ce qu'il est, monsieur Il est là. Monsieur le consul général, monsieur le conseil culturel, dear friends, Uh, I will speak English, uh, provided that you don't repeat it. Because, because you know, if somebody knows that the French minister is speaking English, it would be faster. <laughs> um, I am delighted to welcome you tonight to celebrate three men Professor Duff, Michael Barker, Tom Bernard who will receive the highest distinction of the French government, the Légion de l'Air. Um, Professor Diouf, Michael Barker, Tom Bernard, uh, from African studies to the Septième Art, your achievements are very diverse, but we owe you the same gratitude. And these awards, acknowledge your contributions to the French-American friendship. I will start with this gentleman, before you have a moment of peace. <laughs> Not a long word. Uh, cher professeur, from Dakar to Michigan to New York City, uh, you have invigorated African studies and enlightened generations of scholars. For more than 20 years, you have, to a certain extent, changed the way we approach African history and African studies. You are the leader of a new generation of scholars who are no longer interested in studying and understanding African history and society solely in relation to the colonial state. You investigate Europe and Africa in a sort of continuous dialogue in a process of adjusting to each other. Your approach, which is an interdisciplinary approach, led you to investigate the urban, political, social, and religious aspects of African societies. I wish I could pay tribute to each of your works individually, but allow me to mention the most recent, Tolerance, Democracies, and Sufis in Senegal, a collection of 10 articles on democracy in your native country. That anthology offers a very rich and nuanced historical ethnography and it eliminates Senegalese democracy while reflecting on the structure of post-colonial and modern societies. Your own commitment to train a new generation of African studies scholars is quite exceptional. From the Sorbonne in France, where you obtain a PhD in history, to the University Chef Anta Diop in Senegal, where you became a history professor, you have been nurtured by different sources of knowledge. You later joined the prestigious Council for the Development of Social Science Research in Africa, where you were director of the Research Information and Documentation Department, and you shaped the institution to become the premier African social research center. You then came to the US to Michigan and New York, attracted by the new American approach to African studies. You have now been a professor in the US for over 14 years, first at the University of Michigan and then at Columbia University. At Columbia, you created the Joint African Studies Program with Professor Richard Panegas, a transatlantic initiative between Columbia, Paris Ain, and Sciences Po. It combines French and American approaches to African studies and creates a unique international education. With more than 
40 researchers and 250 students, it is an evidence of your commitment to create educational opportunities across borders. Chef Professor has director of the Institute of African Studies at Columbia and Knighton Family Professor of African Studies and History. You have shaped the university's global leadership in the field of African Studies. Your appointment in uh, 2007 as the head of the institute marked a turning point for its endeavors. Uh, you are an intellectual engagé. Mm -hmm. You have disseminated your expertise worldwide and have become a key player in the academic relationships between French American and African universities. Your insight into the challenges of the world is what makes you such an efficient <coughs> teacher and inspiring mentor. Through your commitments, you forge connections between France, African countries, and the US, the intermingling of diverse minds from across continents, oceans, and times produces a body of new knowledge. It's the reason why I am very honored to award you the Légion d'honneur as the mark of the gratitude of French Republic. Thank you. French, otherwise it's not bad. <laughs> Cher professeur Dieu, au nom du président de la République et en vertu des pouvoirs qui me sont conférés, je vous fais chevalier de la Légion d'honneur. Mm. Well, Tom Bernard and Michael Barker. Usually, but you are not usual. Uh, in a Légion d'honneur ceremony, every recipient receives a separate speech. But I will break the rule, uh, and I hope that you will forgive me, and I will try to explain why. Of course, outside the movie business, uh, you enjoy different activities. Tom Bernard, and you will correct me if I am wrong, you love to go fishing on Block Island, and uh, you also are a hockey and <laughs> golf player. And according to our intelligence service, <laughs> your handicap is 14. <laughs> Michael Barker, you are a great reader who adores Shakespeare. You studied acting, which I can imagine was quite enriching, and you still go to the theater in a religious way. But when it comes to filmmaking, it is a different story. Sometimes you face differences in taste, but it is the exception rather than the rule. You are not only two of the longest reigning executives of the Septième but also close friends who have now been working together for more than 30 years. Thus, I choose to extend the two awards with one single speech, <laughs> as it is an echo of your partnership, success, and I know the I hope our audience will agree that it is probably the most fitting way to celebrate the of you. According to the Hollywood Reporter, you are simply the kings of the art house. In other words, the co-founders and co-presidents of Sunny Pictures Classics. Since its creation, uh, your company has been ranked among the top art house film distributors in the United States. Mr. Barker, Mr. Bernard, uh, you met, I think, in 1979 at Films Incorporated, a company that used to sell movies to colleges and prisons. 
<laughs> At Christmas, you pull each other's names out of the hat in accordance with the Secret Santa tradition, <laughs> and you had to extend presents. Tom presented Michael with the book The Great Shark Hunt by Hunter Thompson, and Michael, you gave Tom some hockey equipment, but unfortunately, as Tom later said in an interview, it did not fit. <laughs> it was a promising start to this now more than 30-year-old friendship. In 1980, together, you joined United Artists Classics, where your first acquisition was a French picture, The Last Métro, by François Truffaut. After you distributed his film, Truffaut went around the world uh, telling everyone, you ought to go with these two people. <coughs> and you also handled Diva, by Jean-Jacques Benex. And from these very first deals, your reputation in France was completely secured. Since that time, you have had a unique place in the realm of French cinema, distributing the largest number of French films in America and Europe. Today, we honor uh, two great friends of France who have efficiently contributed to the diffusion of French cinema. In 1983, you co-founded Orion Classics, and throughout the 80s, you distributed 25 French films, including some of the decade's most renowned works. Bertrand Blier, Too Beautiful for You, Au Revoir les Enfants by Guimard, five Eric Roman's movies, including Pulling at the Beach, and many more. In 1992, you co-founded Sony Pictures Classics, Your Home, along with uh, Marcy Blue, with your permission, I will quote a rival of yours, uh, James uh, Scammers, uh, the founder of Focus Features, who stated, quote, the past 20 years of American film culture would be unrecognizable were it not for their passion, their smarts, their taste, their vision, and their pure love of independent world cinema. And tonight, we acknowledge the truth in this statement. You have often said that you really wanted your business to be useful to society and helpful to the art itself. Well, you have proven more than successful in this attempt. You have, of course, received many awards, namely more than 100 Oscar nominations and about 30 wins. But over and beyond these awards, you have used your intelligence and sensibility to shape American culture and build bridges between the most talented filmmakers of our time and the American society. François Truffaut used to say, quote, Le cinéma, c'est l'art de faire faire de jolies choses à de jolies femmes, unquote. In English, cinema is the art to have pretty women make pretty things. With the greatest respect to, for Truffaut, I think this is a bit short. Uh, the greatest filmmaker in the world would still need actors, actresses, producers, technicians, and the right distributor. You are this link in the cinema industry chain. And without your dedication and passion, French cinema would not have reached the American audiences as it has. Every year, France produces around 200 films, and about 60 of them are distributed in the United States. You have, in the recent years, supported Jean-Pierre Genet, Roman Polanski, the Frères d'Ardenne, Alain René, among many others. You drove The Prophet by Jacques Audiard to the Oscars, 
and Help Amour by Michael Haneke, co-produced in France, to receive the Oscar for the best foreign film. And I understand that you're doing something with uh, who? The new film? Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent. Yes. The French entry. Yeah. Artistic recognition has been abandoned uh, thanks to you. Your job uh, requires courage. Some of the films that you have distributed have not always been uh, seen as truly promising at the initial release and maybe at the end. Your field is not an easy landscape and the art house cinema is often uncertain regarding its commercial success. It requires all the more passion to take this risk. French cinema as an industry and as an art is grateful, very grateful to you both. From United Artists Classics to Orient Classics and today at Sunny Pictures Classics you have never hesitated to support French artists. In addition, your friendship extends to roles as advisors, and you commonly offer precious guidance to French film professionals like Unifrance and the Centre National du Cinéma. Your advice and attention have been a great asset to nurture the very special relationship between our two countries. Through our highest distinction, we commend your commitment to forging, enriching, and maintaining this transatlantic particular cultural bond. And for all these good reasons, France is honored tonight to award you the Legion de Pierre. Bravo. Tom Bernard, au nom du président de la République et en vertu des pouvoirs qui lui sont conférés, je vous fais chevalier de la Légion d'honneur. Bravo. Bravo. Michael Barker, au nom du président de la République, I love your smile. <laughs> et au nom et en vertu des pouvoirs qui lui sont conférés, je vous fais aussi chevalier de la Légion Regarding this important ceremony. And I would like to begin 